All right, everyone. Now we are going to see about getting our Vives controllers to work properly in here. And what I mean by that is uh, registering either for events or something. I really don't know how it works. We are going to, I believe they give us an example scene. Here we go. Scenes. And it looks like they have an example. So let's double click that really quick. Whoa. Okay. So main camera origin. Uh, it looks like the same stuff as before. Track devices and so forth and so on. Let's see what happens if I hit run and play this thing real quick. Here we are, backing into the play space. There we are. Okay, I'm in. I'm clicking on the controls, but nothing's happening. So we need to figure this out. So this might not be the right scene to do that. All right, so that didn't work. Let's move on ahead then to something else. Here we are. Test controller looks like it might be a good one to go with. All right, so test controller. Print controller status. So these are things like indices and so forth. I don't plan on messing with that at the moment. Button IDs, okay. Uh, update. Well, here we are. So we can use SteamVR underscore controller dot input dot get touch down, get touch up, get touch for polling information. It looks like about what happens. Let us go back in here and take a look at the quick start guide because that I have not looked at. Okay, that didn't help a whole lot. Let's go back to the README. You know, let's let's go into their script and find SteamVR controller. So the controller, if we have access to it, we can call all of these different functions here, get press, get press up, get press down, get touch, and so forth and so on. So once again, this is just polling the device for information. So under extras, there's a Steam VR underscore track controller script. And it looks like this thing is registering or declaring a series of clicked event handler events. And it has a delegate up here as well to handle any kind of events that occur. So this script itself has a series of overridable on clicks, menus, and other kinds of events that directly deal with a controller. So this means I could register my own events with this object, and then when things occur, um, it would automatically happen as well. So let's go back to our scene really quick. What we're using here is our left and our right. I'm just, I'm trying to think, should I be, should I be messing with this? Or should I mess with the other thing? So it looks like they have two example scenes in this extras, a uh, test inverse kinematics and a test throw. Let's open up test throw. Under the camera rig, we have our controllers. So we have two new scripts. We have Steam VR test throw. If we open this up, test throw requires a tracked object to be also uh, included on it. I'm sure we get a reference to that tracked object right there, and we're probably going to use that tracked object for things. So we have a fixed update, and it looks like we're getting information and we're directly polling information. So we're not, we're not using an event system here. We're let's go ahead and give this scene a quick test just to see what actually happened. There we are. I'm in my room. Here I am. I can make a ball. That's a weird looking ball. I guess that's to keep them from rolling too far. It's like quite a lot. So anyway, important things to note, um, Steam VR, we're going to pull for the information it looks like. And while it does look like there is an event system in the, ut it, it looks like there is some sort of an event system that we could set up with delegates, but the code that Valve has supplied looks like it's just doing this with uh, uh, direct input access. So that's what we're going to try to do now, I suppose. Uh, let's go ahead and implement our own thing for this. So we're going to have controller left and controller right. We're just going to start with, I guess, left for now. Let's create a new script, uh, not under Steam stuff, but under our own. Right click, create C sharp script, and we'll just call this, um, I don't know, Vive controller, I suppose. So now we're going to follow suit with what test throw kind of showed us. And in Vive controller, we're going to start with a required component. Let's do required component with a type of, and that type is going to be the Steam VR underscore tracked object and as far as i can tell the reason for this is because tracked object contains a class called device so now that we have this required component we're going to of course need to store that as well so let's create a steam vr underscore tracked object and let's just call this uh tracked object so in our start method we're going to want to grab a reference to that tracked object let's do tracked object is going to be equal to uh, get component uh, tr uh, steam vr underscore tracked object. 
Now in our update method, uh, now uh, SteamVR's test throw did this in the fixed update. I believe that's because they are directly manipulating things with the physics engine. And when you do that, you do of course want to be using the fixed update method. In our case, we're not doing anything with physics at the moment. So we're just gonna do it in update. For right now, what we're gonna do is uh, do an ifs check. So if, and we're gonna follow with their convention. Um, the first thing we need to do though, is we need to grab a reference to the device itself. We're going to end up doing this by calling, if we go over to Steam VR test throw, right here, var device is equal to a Steam VR controller dot input, and then passing in the label of the device, which is going to be whatever tracked object we have associated with this object. So the reason for the tracked object is so we can get the index as well as other information, but for right now, the index, and then we use that to grab the correct device information as well, using what looks like a static method here because we don't actually have a Steam VR controller. So going back into here, uh, Steam used a var, of course, which basically means figure it out yourself. Uh, but I believe it's actually of type device. If we take a look, whoops. So it's actually of type, hold on. So if we go on over into Steam VR controller script really quick. So let's double click here. We come in here, Steam VR controller. If we scroll on down, it has a public class called device which is what we're going to want to use. So it's Steam VR underscore controller. It also contains our button mask field, which is going to be used to tell the Steam VR controller which button we're actually going to be working with. Here's our static method, uh, device input, which allows us to get a device through uh, any device index. And that's what we're going to be calling now. Steam VR underscore controller dot input. We're going to pass in an integer value. So we're going to typecast this to int first because we're going to get our tracked object, which was required. And we're going to use the, uh, the index. The index, the field. All right, so that's going to get us our index. And with that index, it's going to then get us the input of the Steam controller that we've requested. And of course, the Steam controller is of type Steam VR underscore controller dot device and we'll call that device the reason i'm using this instead of var is because when you know what the type is i like to use the type uh, var just requires that someone goes and looks up what the hell it is later on and since this is a learning experience let's learn it properly now that we have our device we can start doing requests to find out all these different pressings of buttons and so forth and so on so right now i'm only interested in finding out information uh, about the what is it the trigger button so let's take a look at our different options. So we have the button mask and in there is trigger right there. So device dot get what button or get uh, get press down. I guess down is when we want to do it. So get press down. And when we press this thing down, we need our button mask, which we're going to get by using steam VR underscore controller dot button mask dot trigger. Yes, there we are. And that's all good, that's good. We'll kind of, we're gonna close our if statement right there, put in some parentheses. And now that we have registered a get press down, we need to do something in the scene. Now I'm not really set up personally. Uh, I'm, st I'm still in the wrong scene. Why am I in this scene? Let's just create a game object wherever we happen to be. So let's just go ahead and do, uh, let's see, get, pre get press down. We're going to do a, what is it? Um, create primitive. Inside of create primitive, we're going to need to pass it a primitive type. So let's do primitive type dot, what, what do we want? Let's do a sphere, how about that? And we're gonna want this object, game object GM is equal to that. GM dot transform dot position is going to be equal to the device. Actually, I don't need a device. This object is connected to it, so I can just do this dot transform dot position. So every time I press down on this thing, I will create a new primitive sphere at that location. That sphere is probably going to be too big. So let's also do a gm.transform.local scale. And we're going to want this equal to a new vector three. New vector three. Um, actually, vector three. Uh, let's just do it this way. Vector three dot one uh, times 0 0.2 f. So that's going to scale down that vector by from 111 to 0 0.02. You know, it's going to make it smaller. Okay, that's all set up. Let's go back into Unity really quick, see if anything fails. Nothing's failing yet. Hit the run button and see what we have. All right, so putting on the HMD now. 
getting into my play space. Okay, so it looks like I'm tracked now. I'm looking around, bringing the controllers into the world as well. You know what, this isn't gonna work. You wanna know why it's not gonna work? Because I didn't bother putting a script on anything that matters. So let's see if I pop this thing up very slightly. We stop this for a second and we go to the, what was it? The camera manager underscore uh, camera system. And let's put it on the left and the right scripts. So let's find our scripts and put a Vive controller there and a Vive controller there. And let's hit run. And there's a sphere. So there we go. So we're able to now create objects on the fly. That's fine. So great. So we did our first big thing, which is making sure that we know how to get input from this system. Oh, it's really fun. All right, so now that we've done all that nonsense, in the next video, we're going to hook this thing up with our use manager and actually make everything work properly. Thanks everyone for watching. See you next time. Bye.